All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks again for taking time out of your busy schedules to fellowship one with another as we commune with the Holy Trinity, the Holy Father, and we thank you. Good morning, little sis. How are you? Good to have you on. So, who wants to kick us off in prayer? Hello, bro. Me, 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 <laughs> me. Go for it, Melissa. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful morning. Yes, uh, I, uh, we pray for a good weather, cooling yes. weather, rain. Oh, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. we do need uh, the rain. We do not want to California yep. to buy water from other states. Come on. Oh, I love it. We, yes. we need lots of rain. <clears throat> and also, uh, we are praying for, um, for, um, for the cure for yep. COVID-19. Yep. And that uh, we are happy oh, yes, uh, yes. with the uh, yes. opening up of the business. Uh, business is blooming, yes, uh, yes. Uh, prosperity, and everybody is happy with their freedom. Yes. So uh, let's get them uh, the awakening that they need to. Yes. And, yes. and get the COVID-19 uh, Delta yes. away from, all, from, from North America. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, from, uh, from our areas yes okay and uh, we uh, bless the land that we are living on yes um, for the good the beauty full and the holy yes and uh, let's open up our um, wisdom eye uh, yeah. our wisdom and understanding for our lesson today Yes, thank indeed. you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank. Amen. Great prayer. Thank you. 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 All right. Testimonies. Who has one? Two minutes to share. Two minutes to share. <laughs> yes, too <the> many. <laughs> what is that one? Lily has some. That's probably the. Can you see this? Yes. Milo? Yeah. I used to have this cookie in Asia, and I found this here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> enjoying, enjoying the, the cookie right now. So you manifested a cookie all the way from overseas. Is that what you're telling us? Yes, I did, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Thing, I'd cleaned this shelf. I knew for a fact it wasn't in there. Where did it come from? Because I really wanted it. I shot that rocket of desire and I followed the good feeling trail of it and the universe brought me, guess what? Cookies. Yeah, I, I, me too. I was, I was thinking of the, you know, the mooncake festival. Uh-huh. You know, and I was thinking about that and then I walked mm. down uh, the aisle of Costco and I saw the mooncake. <laughs> Mooncake coming. And look how fast these are manifesting. They're not taking long, they're not taking weeks. They're not taking days. They're taking minutes. Speed of thought. I want mooncake. Huh. Go watch this. Universe says, all right, Melissa, go to Costco. All yeah, the yeah. stores around. How many stores did you pass to get to Costco? Tons of stores. Yeah, you have to go to the particular Costco. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> I went to the Costco that's in Fontana that I saw the mooncake. Oh my God. There like, it is. Thank you, universe, for now I get to enjoy it. I want cookies. They don't sell it here. It doesn't matter. Universe can manifest anywhere. Is anything, is anything too hard for God? No. no. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Who is in you? God. God. Wow. So is anything too hard for the God in you? No. no. So who are you? God. God. Call those things that be not as though they were, is what your Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11. You call those things that be not. I want cookies. We don't have physical cookies or a store to buy these cookies. <laughs> How do we get the cookies? From a thought. Call, ask, and it is what? 
given. So simple. It is so simple. Good. Thank you. Any other? Yesterday, um, I norm I normally go to the little corner store where I stay. Mm -hmm. And so I've been figuring out the whole bus system in Arizona, getting back, getting Raina back and forth to school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was thinking, you know, I'm over here calculating. I'm like, okay, if I spend like $2 a day, that's like $10 a week, da 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 Anywho, mm -hmm. yesterday we walk over to the corner store and I often talk to the to the uh, the people that that work in there. And so um, we get up there and one of the guys, he goes, are you taking the bus every day to take your baby to school? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, here, I have a 30 day bus pass for you. <laughs> <laughs> what a blessing. I was like, thank you. Ooh, thank you, Lord. No. <laughs> Ask it is what well. wow. given. Don't exactly. make it hard for God. This is too is this is why you always hear me say this is too what easy. easy. It's too easy. Every last one of your testimonies, praise reports, were what too easy. Anson was thinking about a box coming Thursday, but he really wanted it on Tuesday. What happened? It came Tuesday. We don't care what the Amazon delivery screen says. What do I say? I want it now. Why? Now faith is the substance of what? Things hoped for and the evidence of things what? Not seen. Hello, Sister Linda, how are you? Good to have you on. Good, I'm gonna put, take off my video. I just wanted to let you know I was in. Hey man, I was gonna acknowledge you. Thank you so much Thanks. for joining. So when you ask, it is what? Freely given. Nothing too hard for God. I need means. Now watch this. We're going to take the bus and turn it into a car. Everybody agree to that. <laughs> amen. 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 <laughs> you can manifest a 30-day bus pass. You can manifest a car. You can manifest a house. You can manifest. These things are too easy. Get out, get, get out the way of you. Who shall ever say to this what? Mountain. Who's the mountain? Me. Why? I'm the only one in my mind that gets in the way of my thought. But then I want to blame everybody else and project it on others when that's not how we're supposed to be. Own it. Don't blame, don't blame an outside source. Own it. When you own it, now you can get cookies. You can get bus passes. You can get early delivery. Melissa, come on, you get these things. I ain't mad at that. And we ain't even got in our lesson. <laughs> Amen. We are on page 807 for those who have the, I mean, 308. I'm so sorry. I'm doing enough. 308. And we're in part three of this lesson. And the title of this one, part three, is Be Vigilant Only for God and His kingdom. Woo, somebody ought to say amen to that. Be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. What if we woke up with that mindset, in which we all do? I come into this day how? With God, with God, by God, and for God. Hallelujah. How are we going to live this day? In God, with God, for God, and by God. How are we going to close the day? So now, if we have that mindset going in with <clears throat> really being vigilant, only for God and the kingdom, where is God? Greater is he who is in me. Where is the kingdom? In me. So everything I need is where? In me. Make sense? Woo. We said before that the Holy Spirit is evaluative and must be. He sorts out the true from the false in your mind. That's why it is written, let this mind be in you, which is also what? In Christ. What type of mind? The perfect mind of freedom, the perfect mind to create as the Father creates and teaches you to judge every thought you allow to enter in, in the light of what God put there. Notice I didn't say your ego. Notice I didn't say your wife, your husband, your children, your friend, your mama and them. God put it there. So now how's your judgment against it? You're not, you're gonna bless that, okay? <clears throat> whatever is in accord with this light he retains to strengthen the kingdom in you. 
I told you the kingdom was in you. So when you want cookies, what do you do? I go in the kingdom and I go in my kingdom shelf, <laughs> in my kingdom kitchen, and I get a kingdom cookie. <laughs> Amen to that. Amen. What is partly in accord with it, he accepts and purifies. So I'm often asked, Pastor, I get these negative thoughts and I'm wrestling with this thought and I'm, I got all these negative da 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 da. And I said, give it to the Holy Spirit because his job is to what? Purify. Faith purifies. Amen to that? Amen. But what is out of accord entirely, he rejects by what? Judging against. This is how he keeps the kingdom perfectly consistent and perfectly unified. Remember, however, that what the Holy Spirit rejects, the ego accepts. And we see that with people who are resistance to when you are trying to love them in a way that they can love themselves as God loves all of us. They are resistant to that because the ego wants to be in charge. This is because they are in fundamental disagreement about everything being in fundamental disagreement about what you are. The ego's belief on this crucial <clears throat> issue vary, and that is why it promotes different moods. The Holy Spirit never varies on this point, and so the one mood he engenders is what? Joy. He protects it by rejecting everything that does not foster what? joy one of your fruit of the spirits is what joy and we're in galatians he protects it by rejecting everything that does not foster joy and so he alone can keep you what wholly joyous so when you're happy <clears throat> you're happy because the holy spirit is keeping you wholly joyous does that make sense so as we all feel the excitement and the buzz of Melissa, we all get charged by that energy. Yes. The Holy Spirit does not teach you to judge others. Let me say this again. The Holy Spirit does not teach you to what? Judge others. Because he does not want you to teach error and learn it yourself. Remember we told you earlier, you teach what you what? learn he would handle he would handle be consistent if he allowed you to strengthen what you must learn to avoid in the mind of the thinker then he is judgmental but only in order to unify the mind so it can perceive without what judgment this enables the mind to teach without judgment so this is why we say you don't judge anything it's written, judge not, or you'll be what? Judge. But everybody took that context and put you into a, a hell, put you into a, a slave, put you in entrapment. It was a, a misunderstanding in the belief. Because nowhere do you see that in that scripture. Yeah. Judge not, or you'll be judged. In other words, here's the best way to get out of judgment. If you see something that you don't like, put your face on it. If you're homophobic and you see two men kissing, two women kissing, put you, oh, pastor, there got to be another way. <laughs> well, we're telling you the fastest way. Because everyone is your what? Brothers and sisters. If we, if we are to be as Christ, he didn't judge what? Anybody. Not the woman at the well. Not the woman that they came, they came and accused. Nobody. This is able to mind and therefore to to be without, this enables the mind to teach without judgment and therefore to learn to be what? Without judgment. When you become unjudgmental, you know how easy it is to love people even when they're persecuting you? Wow. I'll let that register. Not easy. It is not easy at all. Why do you think is, why do you think picking up the cross and following him is not easy? He never said it was going to be easy because to pick that up was to pick up torture. But you knew at the end of this death was what? Resurrection. The undoing is necessary only in your mind so that you will not project instead of extend. 
God himself has established what you can extend with perfect safety. Therefore, the Holy Spirit's third lesson is be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. Can somebody read the next one? <clears throat> Please. This, this is a major step toward fundamental change. Yet it, yet it, it still has an aspect of thought reversal since it implies that there is something <clears throat> you must be vigilant against. Mm -hmm. It is advanced far from the lesson, which is merely the beginning of the dot reversal, and also from the second, which is essentially the identification of what is more desirable. This step, which follows from the second as the second follows from the first, mm. emphasizes the dichotomy between the desirable and the undesirable. It is therefore the ultimate choice inevitable. While the first step seems to increase conflict and the second may still entail conflict to some extent, the step calls for consistent vigilance against it. I have already told you that you can be as vigilant against the ego as for it. This lesson teaches not only that you can be, but that you must be. Mm. It does not concern itself with order, difficulty, but with clear, clear cut priority for vigilance, this lesson is unequivocal in that it teaches there must be no ex exceptions, although it does not deny the temptations to make exceptions will occur. Okay. Did you hear that? It's not going to stop the temptations from running through your mind. It's up to you to manage your mind. Does that make sense? Here then your consistency is called on despite chaos, yet chaos and consistency cannot coexist for long. If people could practice rejoicing in trouble, trouble wouldn't last long. But because people acknowledge and accept and wallow and show so much love to the trouble, what think happen? More trouble. <laughs> Since they are mutually exclusive, as long as you must be vigilant <clears throat> against anything, however, you are not recognizing this mutual exclusiveness and still believe that you can choose either one. By teaching what to choose, the Holy Spirit will ultimately teach you that you need not choose at all. Takes you off the hook. Y'all should say thank you. <laughs> Especially me. This will finally liberate your mind from choice and direct it towards creation within the what? Kingdom. Choosing through the Holy Spirit will lead you to what? The kingdom. Choosing through the Holy Spirit will what? Lead you to the what? Kingdom. So this one, it says by teaching what to choose, meaning we have to choose what we want, right? You choose what the Holy Spirit gave you. Remember the other day and you said, the Holy Spirit told me? That's how you get, that's the revelation. Once you get the revelation, that's when you begin to teach. So the choosing is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does it for you. Here's why. Where does the Holy Spirit live? In your mind. The Holy Spirit lives in your mind. Let this mind, where is the Holy Spirit? In your mind. Revelation comes from God to the mind. That makes sense. So now Holy Spirit job is to what? Comfort and teach. So when the Holy Spirit gives you the revelation, how many of you have helped someone who was in trouble, needed advice, and it was a difficult situation and you mustered up the wisdom to give it to them and it baffled the mind on how profound it was. Every last one of you should raise your hands. Mm -hmm. Correct? Where did you get the wisdom from? Holy Spirit. Why? Holy Spirit inspired. Absolutely. Because why? Pastor taught me, Holy Spirit, what can I do to soothe my brother or sister's broken heart? So now you're letting the Holy Spirit choose in this direction. So now it takes you off. So now this will liberate your mind from the choice 
what it does is when you read the passage, you can't serve two masters. You love one. Or you can't have a split mind. You can't be over here and then trying to go to the kingdom. It's like you trying to look left and look right at the same time. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> Unless you are a human chameleon or some reptile or alien, not going to happen. So <laughs> does that make sense? So what it yeah. does, is it helps you stay in faith. It helps you stay in alignment with God. Because how many of y'all have made bad choices? Let me put both hands up. I probably need to put my feet up too. <laughs> and then you all thought, I wish I would have choose differently. The reason why we make bad choices is because we don't listen to our whole, uh, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, come on, say it again. That ego get to talking so loud and you start believing that ego. Well, maybe, well, if everybody in the, watch this, if everybody in the church is saying amen, it must be right. Dr. Macon? Yes, ma'am. Uh, as you were talking and explaining the Holy Spirit, it made me think that lately like in the last few months there's a term that i use and it's divine mm -hmm. and it's that you can't explain it any other way it's like how did i know that or yep. where did that come from or how did i know to turn this corner or to go talk to that person yep Ooh, and maybe. there's only one word that i can use for it and mm -hmm. i talk to my nephew a lot and it's divine it's like it just mm -hmm. Yep. It just goes above our own reasoning and thought, but it's right, and you know it. Amen. That's what I call above faith knowledge, because there is levels to faith. You can have no faith to what? Great faith. But you, when you get revelation from God, you just know. And when people ask you, you sound crazy trying to explain the what? No. I just know. Yeah. It was in my spirit. God told me, the Holy Spirit told me, whatever, however you phrase it to them, they're not going to, some won't understand you. Some going to look at you strange and, oh, you talking to dead people, you know, some people will accept it. It just depends on who is before you. It depends on who you attracted before you. Better word. Every person that is before you, you attracted. So now it's to teach you not to judge them, but to what? Plant a seed. What is the seed? Love. Now, God can do the water. He can do the increase. Now, the Holy Spirit can come in and comfort and then what? Teach them. Cha teach them to what? Change their thoughts. Change their ways. How many of us have ran into narcissists? We thought, oh, my Lord, why did I run? And why do I keep running into all these narcissists? Why? Do I why? Well, aren't you a little narcissist? Pastor, I'm not narcissist. Then why? The law of attraction says you reap what you sow. Why are they there? They're teaching you to do what? Heal yourself. Trust God, not judge, and don't separate yourself from them. Now, if you show them unconditional love, now they get to see the glory of God. Now, whether they treat you kindly or not, it don't matter. Why? I'm in the kingdom. What could they possibly do to me? What could they possibly, no weapon form, what could they possibly do to me? When my brother went to the cross, when all of our brothers went to the cross, he didn't say not one word. He mumbled not one word as they beat him, as they tortured him, as they humiliated him, as they spit upon him. He didn't say not one word. Why? He was directed toward creation within the kingdom. He knew who he was. I am the son of God. He was definite. Then he says he did not think it equal to be what? He didn't think it robbed to be what? Equal with God. So now he says, the works that I do, you shall do and do what? Greater works. Wow. I'm your elder brother. So now we family. So if I say this, you have the permission to say it what? Also, because now you have what? My mind. Ooh. <laughs> Make sense? Yes. All right. So choosing through the Holy Spirit would lead you to the kingdom. You create. I want everybody to listen to this. By your true being. What does that mean? 
we're going to use a different word. You create by your heart. Everybody understand that? But what you are, you must learn to remember. The way to remember is inherent in the third step, which brings together the lessons implied in the others and goes beyond them towards real integration. If allowing yourself to have in your mind only what God put there, you are acknowledging your mind as God created it. Therefore, you are accepting it as it is. So when I have elderly people come to me and they start telling me, oh, pastor, my mind ain't what it used to be. I tell them, stick your tongue out. And they look at me strange. And I say, stick your tongue out. And they stick their tongue out. I say, you take these two fingers and you put your finger, you stop that talk right there. Because. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Tongue. Yes. Because if you continue to say, Mom, what's going to happen to the mind? It's not going to be what it used to be. Now you can't remember nothing. Now you done forgot this. Now you done got into Alzheimer's and dementia because of what my mind ain't yours. Your, your body don't know the difference. Your body's not in charge. Your mind is. And you were taught to believe what you see, feel, touch, hear, taste, right? Since it is whole, you are teaching peace because you believe here's where peace that surpasses all understanding makes sense this is why it's beyond the understanding because you believe in it so you faster believe? yes ma'am question so when you say you create by your true being mm -hmm. your true being is your heart yes your heart so meaning if you create out of love right yes yep your true being is the divine spark of God. You all, this is why you all are children of God. You all that have the essence of God. Greater he is what? In me than who is in the world. Where does God live? He lives in you. So there in the scripture, uh, renewing me a clean heart or a new heart. Yep. And get rid of the old one, the the heart of man where we're angry and we don't forgive and stuff and mm -hmm. God renew me with a clean heart so that I can forgive and love above all of the pettiness or something. Yes. Let okay. me add on to that and not judge. And not judge. Absolutely. Not judge. At 100%. This Secret. is the mind. Go ahead. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. This is the mind of this is the mind that we should all have is that peace. When we come before people, there should be, you should see everybody, you should first train yourself to see every face, your face on every person. That's the first trick. So when I see Melissa, the first thing I saw with Melissa, I saw my face on Melissa. And I had her hair, her build, her frame, but I had, she had pastor's face. When I met Sudi, I put my face on Sudi's body. Lily, does that make sense? Keeps me out yeah. of judgment. Keeps me from separating why God put them there. Law of attraction. Why did I attract them? We all want to love. We all want to grow. We want to expand. We all want to wake everybody up so they can have an intimate relationship with God just like we have an intimate relationship with God. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense, Melissa? Yeah. So, so um, when we create, right, mm -hmm. uh, the secret, the secret is uh, to create um, out of love. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, so yes. That is the secret. Uh, we have to be uh, in alignment and mm -hmm. out of love. Then it will be uh, done very quickly. Oh, very quickly. Um, so many, uh, so when we create, we have to look at our, uh, for the good, for the yep. good of uh, the, the mass. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. How does it benefit others, not just myself? Why, why, why? Because my 
cup overfloweth. Do I need any? Do I need anything? Do you need anything? To need means lack. And you don't lack anything being a kingdom citizen. You can't be a kingdom citizen and have a need. Why? God has provided you everything. Call those things to be not. I don't have to go purchase it. Hanson wanted his gift early. He got it two days early. Lily wanted cookies from China where they don't sell it in Canada and found <laughs> cookies from China. Did you look? Go ahead, Lily. <laughs> And Anson wanted to get out of camping overnight. <laughs> yes. And did it take weeks, months? No, it took speed of thought. God moves in what? Speed of thought. Melissa created what? Speed of thought. Teresa created speed of thought. How do I? What? Watch this. You all did something so simple. And here's what I want you to practice. When you're asking or praying, keep it simple. What do I want and why do I want it? Simple. And get into the true essence of creating by your true being. Am I creating this out of fear or am I creating this out of love, as Melissa said? And you'll know the difference because fear is resistance. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. Everything's tight. You feel it in your body and it don't feel good. So go ahead. The the why that you're asking, that's where you have to ask yourself, is that a satisfied or unsatisfied thought yes. that yes. Okay. yes, 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 yes. Very good. Ooh, Anson, I love you because I would have missed that. Thank you for that. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is this a satisfying thought? Because if not, what? Change the thought. So easy. Don't make this hard. When you're a deliberate creator and a kingdom citizen, don't make it hard. Why? Who's in step two? Who's in step two of the God. We're in five steps? Who's in step two? God. God. Absolutely. Why? God does the work. <laughs> All right. The final step will be taken for you by God. Amen. Amen. But by the third step, the Holy Spirit has prepared you for God. You got to get everything right before you go before the majesty. Before you go before Father. Does that make sense? So what he does is he corrects the errors of your thinking. And as he does that, now you become holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, where you get your H-O-L-Y from. God only deals with the W-H-O-L-Y because he is the H-O-L-Y. <laughs> Hope y'all caught that. <laughs> he is getting you ready for the translation of having into being by the very nature of the steps you must take with who? Him. Enoch walked with God. Sudi walked with God. Linda walked with God. Anson walked with, does that make sense? Yes. He's leading the way. By those very steps, you must take him, must take with him. You learn first that having rest on giving and not on what? Getting. Better to what? Give than to what? Receive. Next, you learn that you learn what you teach and that you want to learn peace. Every person that comes before us, don't we want peace or do we want conflict? Peace. We want peace. Even I don't care if they come with the war paint the war weapons, the war armor, you stay in peace. Next, oh, this is the condition for identifying with the kingdom since it's the condition of the kingdom. 
you have believed that you are without the kingdom and have therefore excluded yourself from it in your belief. It is therefore essential to teach you that you must be included. When my brother walked the earth and taught the message, it was what? All inclusive. Christ's message was what? All inclusive. This is for the Jew first and also for the Greek. They're going to get it first because I live amongst them. And then as the word gets out, it will get penetrated. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, oh, the third step is thus one of protection for your mind, allowing you to identify only with the center where God placed the altar to himself. Altars are beliefs, but God and his creations are beyond belief because they are beyond question. The voice for God speaks only for belief beyond question, which the preparation for being without question. As long as belief in God and his kingdom is assailed by any doubt in your mind, his perfect accomplishment is not apparent to you. This is why you have so many divisions within the religion, so many divisions within your government, so many divisions within the family, so many divisions with your race. We can go down the whole list based on this whole misconception that we are what? Separate. I, I am better than you or my pastor preached better than you or my church has the right name on the building because we do these things. Or And then, um, we're not knocking nobody. We're just telling you how it is and wonder why everybody's so divided. How many of y'all have been approached and was asked, what's your religion or what church or what's your denomination? Raise your hands. Let me see them. Every last, yep. Did judgment come right after that? It sure did. Oh, you need to come to my church. Oh, man, you need me. Oh, well, what's your, oh, you shouldn't be that religion. <laughs> yes, Lily? For us, um, it's not judgment after that. It's confusion. <laughs> Why are you so confused? Because this is what my pastor teach. He teach me to love you and meet you right where you are. We, I don't have to fight this fight. How does, watch this. Here's, here's how you get past that. How does what I believe affect you? It does, there, there is, so when you get to people like that and you're believing, that's how does what I believe affect you? Because everybody's not going to believe what you believe. Everybody's going to accept what you accept. Everybody's not going to pray like you pray. Yes, Lily. That, that was a time where a person was, pre, was very stubborn. And then in the end, I kind of like said, okay, you're right. Yours mm -hmm. is the best. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then he was like, what? What did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> messed, messed their head all up, didn't it? Because when you act in love, they get confused. When we practice unconditional love for that 30 days, it changed our lives forever. I started introducing it to other churches. They're practicing unconditional love. This is what love is. This is not what love is. All right, where am I at? Uh, this is why you must be vigilant on God's behalf. The ego speaks against his creation and therefore engenders doubt. You cannot go beyond belief until you believe what? Fully. This is why your belief and your faith have to be in alignment. You can't believe one thing and then try to have faith. It, it's not going to work. Faith and belief are two sides of the same coin. You cannot have one without the other. Now, you can put the coin down and go to revelation knowledge, divine knowledge, which is the revelation where God, Holy Spirit, Jesus, all, they give it to you. That makes sense? You teach the whole sonship without exception, demonstrates that you perceive its wholeness and you've learned that it is what? One. Melissa, I'm gonna use you again because we were so excited when you helped the man heal himself of cancer because she taught the whole sonship without exception. What was the demonstration? 
love. She showed concern for her fellow companion, fellow mate, fellow friend. That makes sense? And she peeped what? His wholeness. She did not see not one sickness in his body. She wouldn't let him see one sickness in his body. How long did it take him to go from having cancer to no cancer, Melissa? About a month. A month. Look at that. Doctors probably counted him out. Family started making preparation. Yeah, the wife was already crying. Oh my God, Melissa, it's going to be, you know? He was <laughs> he thinking, about, he was <laughs> thinking about that already. I said, stop. Hey, you, come on. Come on. I, ah, told, I, I told her, around. stop that thinking. She was hey. crying already. I said, stop crying. Yep. Ego that got in the way. I said, that can be fixed very easy. Yep. Oh, look, come on. Thanks, God. <laughs> Cancer can be fixed. COVID can be fixed just like that. Easy. Is anything too hard for God? There's a scripture in James 5.16 that says, call upon the elders if any of you are sick and let them pray in the Lord of all. I'm still looking for them. Where are they at? We're the only ones. Yeah, we're going to fix, we're going to fix Delta easy. Absolutely, because people were taught to believe what they see. When you get bad news, you were taught to believe that bad news. Well, he's a doctor. He went to school. He's educated. He, this is his profession. All the tests came back in the positive. Then all of a sudden, Dr. Melissa comes along <laughs> with the Holy Spirit and the whole entourage behind her. And oh, well, I use your story, though. I use your story. <laughs> We yes, absolutely. Because what you were doing was getting them to tell a better feeling story. When he got to the word holy, it shook him to his foundation, didn't it? Yeah. He understood. I, I have to show him the word, mm -hmm. how it was spelled, and why it is spelled like that. Come on. He went out, he went from Religious thinking to spiritual thinking, just like that. Nah. Speed of thought. He went from death knocking at the door to now abundant life as a new creature. She didn't have to lay hands on him. She didn't have to throw all on him. She didn't have to dunk him in some water. She spoke a word. <laughs> I ain't making fun of nobody. All of it that all of it works. All of it works. But a lot of people. Use it in fear. Yes, Lily. Uh, sometimes we think that it's, it's hard to, to help anybody. So mm -hmm. now we know, right? We just ask the Holy Spirit. Okay, Holy Spirit, I'm going to do this. Help this person. <laughs> Let me know how. <laughs> our job is to get out. Our job is to get out the way. We don't even know how. We don't need to know how. When Holy Spirit directed me to raise the person from the dead, I didn't ask how. I said, oh, my Lord. And he said, well, you pray for this. You want to be like Jesus. So here it is. They called you. I said, oh, my goodness. I said, I said, give me some time. I said, you must be thinking. You must be thinking. Oh, what did I bring myself into? What did I, give myself? <laughs> what did I pray for? And then all of a sudden, here, here it comes. And it took me three days. And then the interesting thing was I took, I'm going to be careful with my words. I took my associate minister who was, we don't want to judge or label or nothing like that, but he, he was a very doubtful, very, 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 very doubtful until we got there. And when he seen the Holy Spirit move, he couldn't stop talking about it. It messed it. Everybody in that room was astonished. That's what you call a testimony for life. Absolutely. Now the dead woman, me and her best friends, Melissa tried to help. Well, she had to help for um, Miss Lay, praise God, creating on our own now in the fullness yeah. of the wholeness. That's the blessing. 
All we have to do is be the light. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all. You don't need to know the how. You just need to trust. That's it. Melissa trusted and said, get out of. She spiritually slapped him. <laughs> get out of fear. What are you crying for? He ain't even dead yet. You barely got the news. Ink still wet on the paper. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh God. It's the doom. Got to get the life insurance. All these things. And then here come Melissa and teaches them what the doctors could. And thank God, let me say this. Thank God for doctors. Because our doctors, half those folks would be dead. But there comes a point where you have to go beyond and show them what faith and the Holy Spirit can do. Does that make sense? She taught them wholeness and taught them holiness. Wholeness. Now you must be vigilant to hold its oneness in your mind because if you let doubt enter, you will lose awareness of its wholeness and will be unable to what? Teach it. The wholeness of the kingdom does not depend on your perception, but your awareness of its wholeness does. It is only your awareness that needs protection. Since being, since being cannot be, oh, since being cannot be assailed, yet a real sense of being cannot be yours while you are doubtful of what you are. Who are you? I'm a child of God. Did God give you fear? No. What did he give you? Power, love, sound mind. That's who I am. This is why vigilance is essential. Doubts about being must not enter your mind or you cannot know what you are with certainty. Certainty is of God for you. Vigilance is not for it, vigilance is not necessary for truth, but it is necessary against illusions. Truth without illusions and therefore within the kingdom, everything outside the kingdom is illusion. When you threw truth away, you saw yourself as if you were without it. By making another kingdom that you valued, you did not keep only the kingdom of God in your mind and thus placed part of the mind outside of it. What you made has imprisoned your will and you're given you, and, and you're given you a sick mind that must be healed. Your vigilance must, your vigilance against this sickness is the way to heal it. Once your mind is healed, it radiates health and therefore teaches healing. Melissa could not have helped him if she had a sick body. She couldn't have been around him with COVID. <coughs> Weaving and coughing or complaining or crying. Oh, let me cry with you. <laughs> Wouldn't have worked. This established you as a teacher who teaches like me. Vigilance was required of me as much as of you, and those who choose to teach the same thing must be in agreement about what they believe. When two or three agree, be careful, be careful who you agree with. The man that Melissa was talking about, who do you agree with? The doctors. The doctor, I suppose. And then he had to shift his thinking and agree with God who sent the messenger. Now, healing can come forth. The third step then is a statement of what you want to believe and entails a willingness to relinquish everything else. Let everything go. The Holy Spirit will enable you to take this step if you will follow him. Your vigilance is the sign that you want him to guide you. Vigilance does require effort, but only until you learn that effort itself is unnecessary. This is why faith without works is dead. You have exerted great effort to preserve what you made because it was not true. Therefore, you must now turn your effort against it. Only this can, can, only this can cancel out the need for effort and call upon the being which you both have and are. This recognition is wholly without effort since it is already true and needs no protection. It is in the perfect safety of God. Therefore, inclusion is total and creation is without limit. Questions, comments, concerns? All good? All right, that was the, the three-part lessons of the Holy Spirit. Our next lesson that we'll do 
tomorrow will be lesson seven, and we'll get into the gifts of the kingdom. Ooh, y'all should all say, Pastor, I am a gift. Pastor, I am a gift. There you go. Come on now. <laughs> I have a question. Um, yes. I apologize. It. It's not relating the lesson, but it is. Um, you know, all signs show that we have entered into the kingdom age, correct? Yep. Absolutely. And so that means that um, like the word kingdom citizens or as leaders in the kingdom or the whole world is going to, is the kingdom of God. So yeah. that means that there's going to be little kingdoms everywhere, everywhere. Yep. And uh, so I have two questions for you, if you don't mind. And they're not, it's just, I haven't gotten my head around it yet. So Go for the first it. one is everyone considered kingdom citizens, or if you're called to lead, are you called like a council or an elder or something other than a citizen? So I need the wording right for that. And then the second thing is that um, if the kingdom is everywhere mm -hmm. and God is everywhere and everything and all of that then I guess you use the right word that we're supposed to love everyone and not judge because we can't judge God if he's everywhere and everything and we correct. don't know it all yet. Correct, correct, correct. So, so those are the two things that I've been dealing with because a lot of people will think, well, you can't just go along with everything. It's like, I'm not, I go for God. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you see your face on everybody for the last 10 years, like I say, Linda don't know how to love. Linda doesn't have the capacity to love. But when I look through the eyes of Christ or God, then I can love everybody. It doesn't matter who they are or where they are or what their condition is, because I look at everybody as I can see that they're God's child, a part of him, a part of me, mm -hmm. even though I don't like everything but that may get us into some trouble going forward <laughs> because I'm a builder and mm -hmm. I'm serious about what I'm building. And I've been planning for 10 years, like making business plans and what to do in 11 cities. And mm -hmm. so yeah. I ask you, sir, first mm -hmm. of all, on kingdom citizens, is everyone a subject of the king or a citizen of the, of the kingdom, even though no matter what your position is, Mm -hmm. And and is it okay to love everyone because I see God in the whole situation? Even when I look at the adversary, he is one of God. He was one of his cherished cherubim, cherished angels. And so we change, but like in a parent, we have our children do something wrong, but we don't throw our children away or hate them. Yeah, we let them go find their lesson but there's still love for our child. So can you please like help me reconcile that? Absolutely. So the first question, if we understand you correctly, is, is everyone a kingdom citizen? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Here's why. If God took his eyes off of anybody, which is the love of God, they would have ceased to exist and you wouldn't even know they were there. If God took his eyes off of pastor, you wouldn't even know who pastor was. Okay. Greater is he who is in me. So that means God is in every one of his creations. Everybody is here to learn and experience how to evolve and grow as Christ did. Okay. So every person before you is a lesson and a blessing. So when you get those that are resistant to what you're saying, you have to say, am I being judgmental and can I meet them where they are? Absolutely. How does my belief affect what they're doing? It shouldn't. Why? God gave us all free will. Yeah. I don't have control over not one person on here. Correct? Correct. So you know, if I see everybody as a kingdom citizen, now what I've done was I've enhanced my blessing in my relationship with God. Now I'm not worried about the next. It's not my job to worry about the next person. If they're yeah, before, God. that's God's job. Okay. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yes, that part does. Uh, the second question, can you kind of ask it again? Like, um, 
because God is everywhere and everything. And as you said, every person has free will. So it's not for us to judge if they are of God or not or have no God in them. That's for God. So how do I just love? And I'm not talking about for me or for God. I'm talking about in the eyes of man where it doesn't look like that I fall for anything. Do that make sense? Absolutely. Because okay. here's, what, here's, here's how you know how you're in the flow is because the Holy Spirit will guide you into what to say, what to do. He'll tell you, speak to this person. He'll tell you, don't speak to this person. Did Jesus heal everybody? No. no. Did he raise every person from the dead? No. So you have to say, is it my job to plant the seed to everybody? No. If they're before me, we plant a seed. Or do I need a seed planted in me? Because I'm missing something. Because if I get in judgment, I'm out of alignment because now I'm separated. Not only from them, but from God. Does that make sense? So I don't care if we call them a narcissist. We don't care if we call them a Klansman. We don't care if they're racist. We don't care if they're homophobic. We don't, we don't care. Why? We see everybody equally as Jesus did. He loved everybody across the board. There was not one person he did not love. He said, my father sent me. So that means if the father sent them, which he did, then he was of the father's mind. Yeah. All acceptance, all inclusive. Nobody's excluded from the kingdom. Everybody's a kingdom citizen. Everybody. Unconditional means no condition. Whether you mess up, whether you highly blessed and favored, anointed and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't matter. God reigns on the what? Just as well as the what? Hundreds. So he's not a favor of what? He's not a respecter of people. So if he's not a respecter of people and he says what? Let them have dominion over all the earth who's in charge. We are. Free will. So now when I have the law of attraction and these people are before me, I'm either to learn the lesson or give a lesson. I'm either being taught or I'm teaching. Does that make sense? Yes. And that and what that does to be truthful, it keeps everyone out of judgment. Don't worry about an adversary. Don't worry. Don't get out. Get out of that. Because I guarantee you, if the bill come along, you ain't gonna think about an adversary or an angel. You're gonna be thinking, how am I gonna pay this bill? Then you're going to shift your faith to, I got to pay this bill. <laughs> you see how, how fast the mind can go just like that? And you have to keep your mind centered right there in the mind of Christ, the mind of God. So now when you see everybody, now you can put a crown and a rope on every single person. Why? Unconditional love. Was David a man after God's own heart? Did, Dave, did David kill his best friend to marry his wife? Yes. Oh, that was his best friend? That was his best friend. They grew up together. They went to war. They did everything together. Okay. Best friends. Go back and read that story. They were close. That's why the priest came in and told him what was going to happen with the child. And then the priest left. But David was a man after God's own heart. He still was blessed with Solomon. I don't care how you, how you describe the death or whatever. He still got blessed with Solomon. Solomon was the wisest man in that time. Uh, and had meaning. Absolutely. Look at Moses. Look at Abraham. Look at all of them. They were all men. Think about it. Every last one of them disobeyed God and not one of them got sent to hell. Who did Jesus send to hell? Who did he condemn to hell? Nobody. He said, I love you all. Love, lo love one another as what? As I have loved who? You. Come on. We take that love into ourselves, into our spirit, and then take that into the world, what type of day are we going to have? Oh, man, you're going to draw every loving person. And even when the people who ain't loving, you're going to love them, and you're going to bless them so they can get in love.
because everybody who's out of love wants to be in love. Everybody wants to be loved. I don't care who they are. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how everybody want to be loved. Tell me I'm lying. That is one of the first basic instincts to be loved, to be accepted. So that's the answer to question two. I know it's kind of long, but. Thank you. Very welcome. Any other questions? Sir, the, we are the gift. So we are the gift to whom? Everybody. You are the light of the world also. Yeah. You are the gift. Anytime you are before one and they are before you, gifts. Did not, get, did not God create them as he created you? Yes. Are you not a gift of God? Yes. Are they not also a gift of God? Yes. So they are all gifts. Now, what we starting to do is getting into the specific of the gifts. Ah, you, got me, you got me straight. You got me straight when you explain those two questions and straight with scripture. Amen. So the first one is the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. There you so go. the whole earth is the kingdom and we are all kingdom citizens. So that made it real easy. And then you said, we don't have to worry about helping everyone or that only the ones where we go are in front of us. And he only told us that uh, everywhere that the sole of your foot shall tread, I have given you that as an inheritance. So we only have to worry about where we are and not try to get in everybody else's business or ministry or that, just worry about what he's given us at that time. Yes. And I yield. Boom. <laughs> Everyone say amen. <laughs> Thank you. That is it. Any other? I just want to, I just want to share a very quick, uh, quick um, uh, something. You know how you say that we should uh, bless uh, our government? Yep. Okay. So I just read this, that uh, California is going to receive money. Yes. From the federal state, from the federal government to build from the from the federal government mm -hmm. uh, to build our infrastructure. Absolutely. My yeah. God, I said, you know, it's sixty billion over dollars. You're welcome. Oh my Wait, God, you know how good is it's only for California. Listen to this, California. Okay. Mm -hmm. And said California will have uh, 2.53 billion for highway programs yep. over the next five years. You know why? Pastor got tired of driving his car, hitting them little potholes, <laughs> throwing the car on <laughs> And then the bridge replacement. Bridge and falling it. down. This is why uh -huh. I pray for your government. When I pray for the government, I pray for those in high government places and those in low government places. What do we mean by that? Those that are in your federal, those that are in your um, governors, your mayors, people like that, constables, people like, bless these people. We should be, instead of complaining about what the Republicans are doing, and them, we should be blessing them. Lord, please intervene and bless their mind that they can get along, that they can have love, they can have peace, they can have unity, that they can get back to work in which they were placed in office for and do their job. Hallelujah. You know, wow, this is so yeah. great. You know, uh, so, everything, public transportation, uh, water recycling, electric vehicle charging, you know, easy. you know, um, a lot of people say, oh, California is getting expensive. I'm moving to other states. I said, no, 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 no. Stay, okay. stay in California. Well, yep. <laughs> you want to go, it's up to you. You're losing. But look, but look what we did, including our family in Canada. They agreed with us on what we prayed for. Did we not? Absolutely. We prayed for cool weather and we prayed they get rain up in Canada so they're not hot in a drought because they've had the hottest season ever in their history. Here we have all the forest fires. And what do we do, Melissa? Me and you prayed pray, rain in there. Forecast supposed to be hot, sunny in the hundreds. All of a sudden, we got thunder. Pastor, bring in a thunderstorm. Let them have dominion over all the earth. Didn't Jesus speak to the wind? And what did it do? What did he say? Peace, Peace. be, be still. That was only, all you got to do is go out there. Sun, come shine. 
Rain come forth. Period. Let them have what? Dominion. Over what? All of it. Every place the soul of your, you, you quoted it. You got dominion in that land. In other words, here's what you're supposed to do. When you're in that land, your job is to fertilize and get those weeds out of there and move the rocks and make everything beautiful. Is everybody, we're going to close in a minute, but is everybody familiar with Abraham in the Bible? Everybody familiar with Abraham? Uh, I am, yes. Abraham was told by God <clears throat> to pick a land. And he told him, basically, it didn't matter what land you picked, I'll bless that land. He even went to his nephew and asked the nephew what land he wanted. And of course, the nephew took the good land. And where Abraham was, he blessed that land where it was more prosperous, even to this day, is still blessed mm -hmm. in that Middle East region. 2,000, well, actually, 4,000 years, 4,000 years ago, still got that blessing. You remember when I, when I went to Compton, California, and I told you we took the oil when I started ministry? And they wanted me to get the gang bangers out of there and, and change the neighborhood. And we took that all and we went down the middle of the street. And the first day they left and the second day they left and the third. And by the fourth day, there was no gang bangers. And all of a sudden, the neighborhood, to this very day, that neighborhood is beautiful. Beautiful. Prosperous. Matter of fact, the homes there, I think, are probably close to, and Melissa could probably help me, but they're very expensive. They're not cheap. Uh, right now they're not, but that uh, Compton is still the uh, cheapest area that the Los Angeles uh, mm -hmm. people can afford. However, yep. it's no longer cheap. Nope. Mm -hmm. On the high rise. All right. Let us pray out of here. Once again, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We thank you for this precious time that you've given us just to fellowship one with another, to give you the glory, the honor, the praise, to open up our hearts and minds, to receive this word by love and by faith apply it to our lives and take it to a world that is good, holy, and beautiful. Bless us as we go forth in this day, using us for signs, wonders, and miracles, our gifts and our talents. We pray that every word we say is of you and not of ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for traveling grace to and from our destination. Blessing over those you put before us, new and old. Thank you for blessing the homeless, the sick and shut in. Blessing over all the churches in the world we all teach and preach the same thing, to be in one accord. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh -huh. All right, family, we love you. And if you're able to get on tomorrow, we'll see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. And be delivered creators. Love you all. Have a blessed one. Love you. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you all for joining. Bye. Bye, bye, baby. <laughs> Have a good one.